So the chemical composition of aqueous solution, no? we have um, classif classification of solution of electrolyte. So uh, let's define first kung ano yung mga terms na gagamitin at may encounter ninyo from time to time dito sa ating um, chapter na ito. So we have, syempre, water. No? I think hindi na ito kailan masyadong explain. But it's the most simple solvent found on Earth, easily purified and non-toxic. So, um, I think I have told you this um, this fact before that water is the most universal solvent according to a lot of research. But um, do you remember kung ano yung most universal solvent? Yung sinasabi ko na anything ay kaya niyang tunawin. So, um, this is not true. For most, especially kapag nagkakondakt na kayo ng um, research, you'll see that um, ang, ang pinaka-universal solvent natin is methanol. Why methanol, guys? Sorry, I'll split the screen ano, para nandiyan tayo sa computation. Medyo madugudug yung computation nito. Why methanol? Kasi yung methanol, kung mapapansin nyo sa formula niya, is h 3 OH. If you're going to check, ano, if you're going to check yung kanyang um, formula, meron siyang small polar and small nonpolar. Unlike a water, water is a very polar compound that, that just dissolves polar uh, polar compound kasi di ba ang ating um ang ating ang ating principle on that is like dissolves like so um methanol can dissolve both polar and nonpolar but syempre no depende sa dami or haba ng kanya ng nonpolar at polar substance na kakabit sa kanya okay kasi minsan dahil sobrang liit lang ng nonpolar polar compound na ating methanol na hindi na niya kayang um, i-dissolve yung iba Kasi may na-overpower siya. So, um, previously, ano, on, sa history natin, mayroon tayong tinatawag na, ano, Alcahes. Did you remember this? Alcahes. So, this is believed to be the, the, the what do you call this? The universal solvent, previously, you know, sa panahon pa ni para Celsius. So, because Alcahes daw can dissolve different types of any material. So, kaya lang nagkaroon siya ng problem kasi eh, this is a, just a theory. Nagkaroon siya ng problem kasi they were thinking kung madidissolve niya kahit anong material, it can dissolve itself. So, wala tayong pwedeng ipag-contain sa kanya. Whether it's a cup of ceramic bottle, kahit anong bottle pa yung paglagyan mo dyan sa alkahes, natutunaw niya. So, there's no way to contain it. So, hindi rin napatunayan yung existence ng alkahes but they believe that alkahes exist. Okay. So, yun. May myth, may myth tayo doon na baka daw ito yung um, anong tawag dito? Baka daw Alcahes yung philosopher's stone. No? Nabasa niyo ba yun yung article na sinend ko? Anyway, no, balik tayo sa ating discussion. We also have your electrolyte. No? Electrolyte produce ions and dissolves in solvent that conduct electricity. So, um, yung electrolyte natin, ang pinakaalam natin electrolyte, yung iniinom natin kapag nagdi-dehydrate na tayo. Ano? If you don't have a background sa ating clinical chemistry, no, which you will discuss on your future um, subject pagdating ng third year, ano, ang ating electrolyte ay meron tayo niyan sa ating blood. So, ang pinaka-common niyan is yung sodium, potassium, and chloride. In fact, these three are the three electrolyte measured in our laboratory. Ganun silang ka-essential. Though magnesium, calcium, um, ano pa ba yung ibang electro electrolyte na? And other electrolyte are also essential and yung lacking natin yan can cause a lot of adverse effects sa katawan. But sodium potassium chloride, ito yung madalas na i-request sa laboratory being a medtech. So, uh, sometimes ang tawag sa sodium potassium chloride is your electrolyte test. So, meron tayong strong acid and weak acid. So, how do we define strong acid or strong base and weak acid and weak base? So, kapag sinabi natin strong acid, it ionizes completely. Ganito yan, guys. See, for example, hydrochloric acid is a type of um, strong acid. So, it ionizes completely. Kapag ang hydrochloric acid has been dissolved, ano, um, it will be dissolved as 100% um, hydrogen and 100% um, 
chloride. Unlike kapag mga weak acid, say for example, um, acetic acid, uh, this one is a shortcut ng kanyang formula, which is HOAC. No, this one is acetic acid. This one is a weak acid. And if you are going to hydrolyze it, meaning ng hydrolyze, sinuna ko sa water, kapag tinuna ko ang um, um, acetic acid sa water, it will not completely dissociate. Meaning, yung kanyang hydrogen at saka yung kanyang acetate, OAC, will just dissociate completely. There will still be remaining HOAC. Um, say, for example, ito yung ating um, cup full of water. This one is H2O. And then I add HOAC on the water. You know? um, we will expect that there will be some remaining HOAC floating around that water and also a dissociation of 80% hydrogen, H plus, H plus, and 20%, say, for example, OAC acetate. So, it will not dissociate completely. Yun yung pinagkaiba natin ng strong acid and weak acid. Another thing na pinagkaiba nila is that strong acid donates proton. So, again, uh, meron tayong um, common terms na ginagamit. Proton also referred, refers, refers to hydrogen, sorry, or it can also be called hydronium or, or H3O. Okay? How about yung weak acid natin? So, again, they are the ion is partially they are poor conductor of electricity now they usually accept protons and make a strong conjugate base so let's study yung, yung bronsted lorry theory for you to understand what conjugate acid and conjugate base is but first uh, let's discuss the bronsted lorry theory so yung bronsted lorry is an acid is a proton uh, state that an acid is a proton donor and a base is a proton acceptor so it was um established by jn bronsted in denmark and jm lorry in england so meron tayong tinatawag na salt hindi ito yung regular na asin lang or yung regular salt that we are seeing in our kitchen ano um salt is a wide it is a variety no of different types of um product of a mixture of acid and base Okay, so um, it produces in the reaction of acid and base, yung salt natin. And um, usually, it contains both positive and negative charge as a result of acid and base. Yeah, so that is the formula for your salt. Okay, so what is conjugate acid and conjugate base? So when we say conjugate acid, they form, they are formed when um, base, the base, or the basic compound accept protons. And conjugate base is formed when the acid loses the proton. So let me have an example. Ito pala. Okay, but before we dwell into the example, here's a table 2-3. Again, the table number is not... Um, Accurate, ano, double check na lang ako pagdating sa skog na libro. So, we have here the different strong and weak acid, no, na commonly may encounter ninyo. So, we have inorganic acid. Oh. Okay, sorry. We have inorganic acid and many inorganic acids for a while. Okay, so keep in mind itong table na ito, ano? So how would we describe acid and base? Ayan. I think I have a classic example for this one. Okay, so um, here's an example of a dissociation of a strong acid. By the way, ano, water, additional knowing sa water, we know that water is an amphiprotic substance. Amphiprotic substance. Okay, meaning that, meaning that water, water can act as an acid or it can also act as your base. So, it depends kung sino yung kasama niya. Say, for example, meron akong hydrochloric acid plus H2O. Okay, so hydrochloric acid, of course, is an acid, a very strong acid. At dahil kasama niya sa equation si water, the water will act as your base. So nakadepende kung ano yung kasama ng water, kung magiging ano siya. Okay, so as a result of this reaction, sorry, as a result of this reaction, you will form an H3O plus 
chloride. Okay, so in this case, you know, H3O can also abbreviate it as your proton. This one is your hydronium. As I was saying a while ago, you know, it can be interchangeable, uh, interchangeably called proton, hydrogen, or hydronium. So chloride, chloride will be your conjugate, conjugate base. Okay, naiintindihan. Okay, this, this one is an acid and mag aksi water as a base. Then CH3O will always be your conjugate, conjugate acid. And this um, chloride will be your conjugate, um, conjugate base. So how will you know if it's an, a, a conjugate acid or conjugate base? So let's go back to our definition. So when we say conjugate acid, sorry, tumuna tayo. So, they've got definition. So, a strong acid, it donates proton. So, when we say proton, ano yung proton? This is a hydrogen, tama? So, this acid, I'll change the color para mas makita ninyo. This one, yung hydrogen natin dito, will donate its proton to our uh, base. So, the definition of your base is that they receive a proton. Okay? They accept proton. Okay, so um, the definition of your conjugate acid in the mean on the other side, ang conjugate acid when base accept proton. In which case, in yung base natin, yung nag as base, si water, and it accept proton. So, sino na yung magiging conjugate acid natin? Yung ating H3O because it already accepted your Proton. And ano yung definition natin for conjugate base? Form when acid lose a proton. Sino ba yung acid natin? Si hydrochloric acid. Tama? Si hydrochloric acid. And siya ay nag-lose ng proton? Check. Nag-lose siya ng proton. As a result, nag ano na lang siya? Chloride. So si chloride siya yung magiging conjugate base natin. Do you understand the Bronsted lorry Okay. So this, are, um, this is the template for that reaction. Ano? Okay, so this is a conjugate base. Copy. Okay. So this one is ammonia. Another example. This one is your ammonia, NH3, which is a base, strong base. And dahil base water will act as your acid. Okay? So, sino yung magiging conjugate acid niya? Again, conjugate acid, siya yung nakareceive ng, anong definition natin dito? Siya yung nakareceive ng, tama ba? Siya yung nakakareceive ng hydrogen. So, saan lang gagaling hydrogen? Saan lang gagaling hydrogen? From your, from your water. Kasi ang definition natin ng acid, they donate proton. Okay? So, dahil siya yung nag-act as acid dito sa reaction na to, nag-donate siya ng isang hydrogen kay ammonia. Okay? Making the ammonia your ammonium. Naiintindihan? So, yung conjugate acid, ano ang definition? Siya naman yung nag-receive ng proton from your water. And your conjugate base is siya yung nawalan. Nang siya yung nag-lose ng proton. From water, naging OH na lang siya. Naiintindihan? In case of base, this one is base, this one is an acid, and this one is also a base. Okay? So, ganun lang ang pag-identify natin ng conjugate base and conjugate acid. Okay? Okay. Okay, so next natin is your amphiprotic, amphiprotic solvent. So when we say amphiprotic solvent, they behave as acid in the presence of basic solution and they behave as base in the presence of basic solution, just like water. Pero hindi lang water ang nag-exist or nag-act uh, nag as amphiprotic solvent. So we also have your phosphate. We have your methanol, ethanol, and of course your anhydrous acetic acid. So as a result, no, they um they uh, they have an a uh, zwitterion. So itong zwitterion, these are an ions that bears both both positive and negative charges common in salt. Guys, okay, so for a while, huh?
Okay, so when we say Zwitter Ryan, they bear both positive and negative charge. So unlike this one, that say for example, this reaction from your hydrochloric and water, it only have one positive and one negative, one cation and one anion. But in Zwitter Ryan, it is a result of some addition of acid and a strong acid, a strong acid plus a strong base always result into a zwitterion. So when we say zwitterion, it both contain positive and negative charge sa iisang solution lamang. Okay? Next. Okay. So we also have um, sweet um, arenius, which is a Swedish um, chemist formulated ionic dissociation in the solution. So, yung ganitong klase ng association, yung dissociation natin in water, like this one, or yung autoprotolysis, no, also known as self-ionization or auto-ionization, um, they are uh, ampiprotic solvent that form a pair of ionic species. So, autoprotolysis yung nangyayari doon. Even without the presence of water, kaya niya mag-dissociate or mag-behave like they are being dissociated by water. So, meron tayong solvent and autoprotolysis. Let's discuss that, no? Hydronium ion, again, as I was saying, it can be interchangeably called as your proton or you're just your hydrogen. Okay? So, this is a very important figure, figure 2-3, indicating a strong acid and weak base. So, Kindly please take note of this, okay? Strong and weak acid and bases, okay? So, um, we, we have uh, what we call, though we will not be encountering this a lot on our um, next discussion, um, this is just a differentiation or this is just a terminology definition. We have differentiating solvent and leveling solvent. So, when we say differentiating solvent, this is a various acid associates at different degree and does have different strength, like your acetic acid. As I was saying, guys, iba-iba tayo ng percent. Iba-iba ng percentage ng dissociation. Gaya nandun na wig ko kanina. When they dissociate in a solvent, not all of them will dissociate fully. No? Gaya ng mga strong acid and strong base. So, ang tawag natin sa difference of dissociation na yon, when a subject to autoprotolysis or mix with water, ay differentiating solvent. So, we also have your leveling solvent, which is a several acids completely dissociated and has the same strength. So, an example of this leveling solvent is water. So, we have your chemical equilibrium. So, meron tayong titawag na equilibrium constant expression, no? known as your K. Okay, so ito na guys yung ating solving. Ready na ba kayo? So, I hope you have prepared your pen and paper, your periodic table, as well as your calculator. So, again, you may download this for the meantime, since online pa lang naman tayo yung Calc ES and your periodic table pero kapag face-to-face um, -face na kayo at nag-exam na kayo please bring a periodic table as well as a calculator okay you're free to use them so when we say chemical equilibrium and equilibrium constant expression this one is an algebraic expression or equation of concentration relationship that exists among reactants and products at equilibrium okay so say for example is this arsenate Arsenate plus iodine plus hydrogen. Okay, so these are the following results. So um, this given, uh, we'll have, we'll discuss a lot simpler equation later, ano, mamaya. Okay, so we also have discussed probably on our inorganic organic, the Le Chatelier principle, if you're going to remember them from inorganic um, chemistry. So, meron tayong Le Chatelier. And ano ibig sabihin ng Le Chatelier? So, this is a way of the equilibrium to relieve the stress applied in the system. So, say for example, I added arsenate here. No, saan mag-shift yung stress? To your... To your right. So, papunta dito ang ating stress. Kapag nai-stress at nagdadagdag tayo ng compound sa ating reactant, by the way, this one is your reactant and this one is your product side. When we add an amount of any reactant, no, the equilibrium will shift to your product, meaning it will produce more product. When, we add, when the product has been increased and the, and the equilibrium detected that the product is increased, 
the, the equilibrium will shift to your left. Therefore, it will add, it will need to add no more reactant. So that is how Le Chatelier principle um, happens. So it also is a very effective principle when it comes to temperature and pressure increase no, sa ating equilibrium. So, so again, the Chatelier principle is the position of the equilibrium always shift to the direction to relieve the stress no? that is applied in the system. So describing the equilibrium state. So uh, maritime mass action effect, we have thermodynamic and we have equilibrium constant. So mass action effect, it is a shift in position of equilibrium caused by adding one of reactant or product to a system. So, ang tawag natin doon ay mass action effect. Particularly, kapag nag increase tayo ng mass sa, uh, sa both side or sa one side ng equation na yan, ano, ang tawag natin sa shift or movement ng level ng stress or ng equation doon is our mass action effect. No? As I was saying, itong Le Chatelier does not only exist in mass but also in temperature. So that is why thermodynamic is very important in equilibrium too. So in thermodynamic, this is a branch of chemical science that deals with the flow of heat and energy in chemical reaction. So meron tayong definition of term equilibrium constant. So this is also abbreviated as your letter, as your letter K. So it is a temperature dependent numerical quantity. So usually K is already given, no. If you're going to look back, no, sa ating um case kog, nasa pinaka end siya. Let me see kung nandito ha. Tandaan ko 248 tayo. We have an appendix here. Sorry, ang tagal. So the letter K or the constant will always be given, ano, will always be given in the problem. It should be. Okay, it should be. Kasi you have no ways to know or you have no ways to compute for that. Asan ba yung... Sorry guys, ha? I think meron dito nun eh. Okay, this one is a half reaction. Okay, so ito yun guys. Okay, we will discuss further later kung ano yung KSP, KA, at saka um, KB. So this K, itong KSP na yan, that is a, an equilibrium constant. And you have no ways to know kung ano yung equilibrium constant ng, isa, ng, ng isang equilibrium. Okay, you cannot compute for that because it is already given. So in every problem, you have to look for it in the um, problem itself. Okay, number and tayo, 248 kanina. 248. Okay. Masa water natin. Ayan. So, this one is K, but K or equilibrium constant of water. They are all already given. Okay. So, let's go back to our discussion. Okay. Okay, so this is how we write our equilibrium constant. Okay. So we have a general formula of W plus X will be Y and Z. So this one will be your reactants. This one is a template and this one is your product. So if you're going to write write this, it is always, guys, hatandaan, it's always product over reactant. Okay, so yung, yung mismong chemical, say for example, hydrochloric acid plus H2O will form um, a hydronium ion plus chloride. Anong charge? Guys, let me know. Pa-comment ako sa comment section. Anong charge ng ating hydrochloric acid? Anong um, uh, complete charge or total um, molecular charge? Konting review lang from our organic, inorganic. Anong charge ng ating hydrochloric acid? Makikikomment ako para malaman ko rin kung nandiyan pa kayo. What is the molecular charge of your hydrochloric acid? Nandiyan pa ba? Hello? Naririnig pa ba ako? Go guys, um, sagot lang kayo. So I can, I can know na nandiyan pa kayo. Try nyo lang. Magsagot. Hmm. 
Hello, nandiyan pa ba? Ayan. Ayan, may mga sumasagot. Okay, so um, if you're going to search, no, uh, makikita niyo na same yung answer natin sa isi search natin kung halma hanapin niya what is the total charge of your hydrochloric acid. So you will know that hydrochloric acid, being a whole molecular compound, has a charge of zero. This one is an inert compound, but they are not, but it is not inert alone as a hydrogen or chloride. So let me explain to you why. Hydrochloric acid, if you've watched Tyler DeWitt videos that I've sent you last, um, organic, inorganic chemistry, no, ang ating hydrochloric acid, what's the charge of your hydrogen? That's plus one, tama? Chloride is a, um, saan part ang chloride? Sorry guys, ha? Kalimutan ko kung ang tawag. Okay, so ito yung chloride natin sa may fluorine, bromine, ano, yung ating chloride. Nakamutan ko yung tawag. Anong tawag sa kanila? Anong group sila? Anyway, lahat ng nasa side ng nasa side na yon is negative 1 ang charge. So, di ba, kapag nagkakaroon tayo ng total charges, ano yon X. Um, ang nangyari dyan is X is equal to positive 1 plus negative 1. That is why ang charge ito is 0. Kaya na pag nagkaroon tayo ng cross multiplication of all the charges available in that compound, ano nangyayari dyan? Ganito yung ginagawa natin. Natatandaan ba to? So, hindi natin sinusulat. That is why it is written as HCl. Hindi natin sinusulat pare-parehas lang naman siyang 1 ang charge on both. So, the total charge of your hydrochloric acid is 0. Tandaan ninyo, kapag hindi kayo nakakita ng any charges at the top area of your hydrochloric acid, the charge is always zero. So, in case of water here, the charge is also zero. Let me give you another example of how to of how to understand kung ilan yung charges niya. Okay? Say, for example, calcium hydroxide. Hydroxide is a... Uh, this is not just an element. This is a compound molecule. Okay? Existing as a hydroxide. So... Anong charge ng overall charge ng calcium hydroxide? This is zero. Kasi wala kayo nakikita plus or minus. So, ang total charge ito is zero. Bakit naging zero? Okay, bakit naging zero? Ano bang charge ng calcium? If you're going to look at your periodic table, you'll see that it is two. Nasaan ba si calcium? Kasi calcium is in um, group two. No? Group two sa ating periodic table. And lahat ng group two ay merong plus two. Plus 2 as its charge. Though hindi lang plus 2 ang meron sila, they also have other charges. Plus 2 is the most commonly used charge of this group 2 chemical compound. So they are group 2A. Ayan. So ang charge na meron siya, oxidation state na meron siya is plus 1 and plus 2. Pero trademark na niya na kapag siya ay nasa group 2, ang kanyang charge, ang kanyang oxidation meron siyang plus 2. Tandaan ninyo. Your group 1 all, all have plus 1 oxidation state. So, you're gonna look at, at the oxidation state at makikita nyo na plus 1 ang kanyang charge. Ganun din hanggang sa dulo dyan. Hanggang kay francium, cesium, rubidium, lahat yan plus 1. Kasi sila ay nasa group 1. Okay? So, in case of your chloride, fluorine, bromine, sila lahat ay may negative 1 charge. So, if you're going to look at chloride oxidation number, Okay. Ang oxidation number niya has a lot. But negative 1 is the most commonly used oxidation number of your fluoride. So, kung matatandaan ninyo, may video akong sinend from Tyler DeWitt kung paano makompute kapag malaking compound na ang kanyang charges kada isa. So, we use algebraic expression on that part. I may send another video, a sample video of that again. Send ko na lang ulit sa inyo kay Tyler DeWitt na video. Ang galing naman tong app na to, may presyo, cost per 100 grams, 0 0.15. Okay, so let me go back to my um, 
uh, presentation. So, calcium here, alone. No? Kapag alone lang ang calcium, it has a positive 2 charge. And si hydroxide natin, nasa pinakababash ng regular or standard periodic table ninyo, negative 1 ang charge ng hydroxide natin as a whole. So, ano nangyayari dyan? X is equal to plus 2 plus negative 1. Guys, negative 1 times... 2. Lagi natin i-multiply kung ilan yung bilang ng ating compound or element sa kanyang oxidation state. So, x is equal to plus 2 plus negative 2. x is equal to 0. But if you are going to ask alone in this equation, what is the charge or oxidation state of calcium? It is 2. Okay? What is the charge of your hydroxide? It is 1. Okay? So, isasan ko na lang sa inyo ulit yung copy for you to refresh this topic. So, ang nangyari kasi dyan, Okay, this one is negative 1, diba? This one is positive 1. So, to create a formal formula for calcium hydroxide, you have to cross-multiply yung kanyang um, charges. Kaya, ang nangyari dyan, naging calcium hydrox hydroxide. Kaya, naging-ganyan yung nangyari sa kanya. Okay? Naintindihan? This one is an ox computation for your oxidation state. Please remind me that I will send it to you. Okay, so balik tayo. Writing equilibrium constant, we have your product over reactant. Okay, and your constant, say for example, number one example ko, no? Plus H3O will turn into hydronium plus chloride. So this one, anong charge nito? This one is 1. This one is negative 1. Kasi nakakita kayo ng charges sa kanyang taas. Meaning they are an electrolyte. Okay. So they are active you know in in, in transfusing electron. So they they, are, they can create an electricity kasi may movement ng electron eh may charge ang ating mga ion kapag na dissolve sa water. Okay? So water is a very good conductor, good conductor of electricity. That is why kapag nagdissociate ano, 'di ba? Kapag basa ang inyong kamay na sinuot nyo or nadikit kayo sa wire, mas mabilis kayong makuryente unlike kapag hindi basa ang kamay. Kasi nga water is a very good conductor of electricity. Okay? So, kapag binix mo hydrochloride sa water, nagkakasya or nagkakaroon siya ng charges or movement of electrode. Tandaan, ang definition natin ng electricity, I'm going to discuss this further on kasi dadating tayo sa discussion ng mga battery. Electricity is a movement of electron. So, ano nangyayari dyan sa mga batteries na meron kayo sa bahay? Anong mga, meron yung mga batteries na yan? Sa loob niyan, no? may dalawang cell dyan na nagpapasahan ng elektron. Pabalik-balik. Kaya yung mga batteries ninyo, they conduct electricity. Kasi meron siyang contained cell sa loob, which we'll discuss further on. Okay? So, dito, product over reactant, sino yung magiging product natin? Yung nasa numerator natin. That will be your H3O. Ito. H3O. Then, we have to enclose them in bracket. Dun sa video na sinan ko sa inyo yesterday, Ano? Ang ibig sabihin ng bracket is molarity or the concentration. Tandaan ha? Rectangular bracket mean molarity or concentration. So, it can have a unit of m, big letter m, or it can have a unit of mole per liter. Parehas lang yan. So, H3O times yung chloride natin. So, we have your charges, syempre. No, plus, tsaka negative. Divided by yung ating reactant. Oh, sorry. Divided by your ating reactant. So, this will be your constant, no? Which is given. This factor is given. Divided by our, our, our reactant, which is the hydrochloric acid. Teka lang ha, medyo kung mag, baka maguluhan kayo. Move natin. Ayan. Okay, we have your hydrochloric acid and ano yung isa niya? Water. Ayan. We'll discuss further about this type of equation. Kasi dito guys, usually, we don't write water as a reactant. Kahit alam natin na kasama siya sa reactant talaga. Okay? Most of our equation written with our equilibrium constant. Hindi yan natin ilalagay si water sa ilalim. So, natitira lang dyan is yung hydrochloric acid. Kasi nga, meron silang concept ng autoprotolysis. Na kahit walang water, kaya nilang mag-behave at mag-dissociate like water. And also, given na yung water, usually hindi natin binibigay yung water or sinasama sa computation. Ad otherwise, magkakaroon tayo ng mas komplikadong computation. Bakit? We will have to compute for this equation later on.
Okay, kung meron kang dalawang equation sa ilalim na hinahanap kung ilan yung value, mas mahihirapan kayo. But for the sake of demonstration right now, I'll just in include water. Okay? So, saan man gagaling yung kanyang exponent? Guys, yung exponent is from your constant. So, kung ilan yun nandito, but since ang ating hydrochloric on this area is just 1, this one is just 1, this one is just 1, this is 1 is just 1. So, you don't have to put any exponent on all of the sides kasi 1 lang naman siya. So, 1 raised to 1 is the number itself, yung regular number niya. Do you understand? Okay, so remember on, on how to write this um, equilibrium constant. So this one is a very important table kasi ito guys ay yung i-discuss natin sa buong analytical chem of chemical equilibrium. So may iba-iba tayong equilibrium um, constant no, na aralin but we will discuss I think four. Four most important one. No, I... Tama. Madala ng palo natin lahat, guys. So, meron tayong dissociation of water, no? Indicated by KW. So, ito ay ang involved lang dyan. Usually, syempre, ito lagi yung kanyang itsura. Is your water, of course. Nag-iiba-iba lang yan sa temperature. Kaya nag-iiba-iba yung value ng KW sa temperature. Okay? But again, sa inyo kung kunin yung KW, it is already given, no? Kaya ako pinapakita tong skug na to, andito siya sa table na to. KW is a, uh, have a very different variation depending on the temperature. Say, for example, 0, we have 0 0.114 times 10 raised to 14. 25 at room temperature siya ay 1.01 times 10 raised to 14. Kaya often time, Here's the explanation on this. Remember, 25, guys, this is room temperature. So, ito yung, dito yung nag-exist, syempre. Yung hawak niyong tubig ngayon, ang KW niyan is 1.01 times 10 raised to negative 14. 50, medyo mataas ng KW niya, pataas ng pataas, depende sa kanyang temperature. Yung boiling point ng water, 49 times 10 raised to negative 14, ang kanyang KW. So, let me explain yung, tandaan nyo lang dyan is yung 25. Of course, kailangan yung tandaan yung buong table, no? Kasama yan, syempre, sa exam. Yung buong 25 na yan, guys, yung room temperature, it is the standard na ginagamit natin nowadays. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, siya ay ano, at 25 degrees Celsius, siya ay 1.01 times 10 raised to negative 14. Other time, no, siya ay nababanggit lang as 1 times 10 raised to negative 14. Ang H2O natin is a division, kung i-autoprotolysis natin yan, magpo-fall yet magkakaroon tayo ng H++ OH. Tama? Ito yung kanyang dissociation. Okay? So, kung mapapansin ninyo, nag-yield ang water ng isang um, positive at isang negative. And yung H natin na yan, it is related directly to your pH. And yung OH natin, if you are going to watch the video that I've sent you before, there's a computation of directly correlation of your hydrogen and pH in it. So make sure to watch that chapter 3 na sinan ko sa inyo. And yung POH is direct to your pOH. That is why siya ay negative 14. Okay? If you are going to find the concentration of your H and OH, ano, product over reactant tayo. So, KW of water is equivalent to ano, H, then OH, don't forget the um, charges, over H2O. But again, gaya ng sinabi ko, on our case, kapag may H2O tayo nakikita sa denominator, hindi na natin siya, sorry, nag-exit, hindi na natin siya sinasama. So in this case, the KW of water is just H plus and OH minus. Okay? Being in this case, guys, ano, being in this case, ang KW of water at 25 degrees Celsius is ano, 1.01 times 10 raised to negative 14. And if we are going to solve for this in an algebraic expression, okay, um, we have to access the H and OH. So we can say, guys, because water dissociate completely, no? it dissociate 100% into H plus and OH. Okay, so we can say na ay X squared. Ma'am, bakit x squared? Kasi equal lang amount ng H at OH. Naiintindihan? So, we'll, we'll have this as your X. We'll have this as your X. Okay? So, X times X is X squared. So, if we are going to perform the equation and look for X, we have to square root 1.01 to eliminate no, yung square dun sa kabila. So, times 10 raised to negative 14 is equivalent to your 
x. So if you're going to look for x, the x is 1.00. Ilagay ko na lang as 1. Ha? 1 times 10 raised to 7. Baba ko. May computation ba ako nun? Ito pala. Guys, okay, let me double check. Okay, tama pala. Ay, tama ako. Okay, so lahat naman to guys nasa book. Ano? Then we have negative 7. So each x is um, divided into, so yung hydrogen natin being uh, just an x is 1 times 10 raised to negative 7. And yung ating um, OH is also 1 times 10 raised to negative 7. So, ano yung importance nito? Kung napanood niyo yung video ko about pH, ayun, sorry guys, ah, nag-exit eh, napipindot. pH, a formula of pH, ano formula ng pH natin? Is negative logarithm of hydrogen ion. Okay? And your pOH is negative logarithm of your OH ion. So, ito yung formula natin ng pH. And having this, no, as a value, malalaman nyo kung ano yung pH. So, let's try to compute for the pH. Again, guys, we're just on your dissociation of water. Of course, we'll go deeply sa bawat isa niyan. Hindi natin yung papasadahan lang, okay? So, negative logarithm of your 1 times 10 raised to negative 7 is 7. Is 7. So, meron tayong 7 as a pH na 7. And yung pOH, we have 7. That is why, guys, in a pH scale, no, Yung 7 yung ating base. Yung 1 to 7 natin dyan is your pH. And yung 7 to 14 value natin is your PO, pOH. Naiintindihan kung paano derive yung pH at pOH. So, ito yung pinagmulan niya. Kasi ang temperature na sinusunod natin sa KW is 1.01 times 10 raised to negative 14. Okay? So, mamaya babalikan natin tong water. Okay? Kasi ito yung pinaka-simple, I think, sa kanilang lahat ng KW. Okay? We also have your heterogeneous equilibrium. So, ito guys yung mga hard-to-dissolve substance. Hard-to-dissolve substance, ang tawag sa kanyang um, KSP or uh, tawag sa kanyang equilibrium constant is K with SP sa baba na small. Ano? So, ang ibig sabihin ng solubility product, constant. Okay, so usually it exists in um, compounds like your barium sulfate, no, na nagpe-precipitate kahit tunawin mo siya sa, kahit tunawin mo ang barium sulfate sa isang solution, no, may nagkakaroon dyan ng precipitation. So, if you have, if you're going to compute for the precipitation, no, may, hirap, may hirapan kayo. So, ang dissociation constant natin for KSP, gaya dyan, if you're going to check, is again, product over actant, which is BA, barium 2. Saan galing yan? Ito yun, guys. So, BASO4. This one is solid. Kaya siya solubility constant product. Product constant. So, kapag na-dissociate yan, may hiwalay si barium plus, plus 2. And si sulfate. No? Ay, ba't yun? And si sulfate. Negative 2. Ay, bakit may bracket na ako? Sorry. Ito yung equation niya. Ito yung chemical equation niya. Kaya ang magiging reaction niya. Guys, bakit ganun? Kung plus 2 ang barium na charge at negative 2 ang sulfate, ba't hindi ko nilagay dito, ma'am, yung 2? Bakit kaya, guys? Kaya, important yung matanda ninyo yung kay Tyler Dewitt na sinasabi ko. Very important yun, guys. Huwag niyong kakalimutan yun. Yung barium sulfate, Barium ay plus 2, sulfate ay negative 2. So, ano yung nangyayari dyan ano? X is equal to plus 2, plus, minus 2. Ang total niya is 0. And if you're going to check, ano, ang mangyayari dyan, magkocross out sila. But then, dahil barium sulfate ay parehas lang na 2, we can cancel that. Kasi parang parehas din sinabi mo na barium sulfate lang din yan. Okay, na dinoble. 
or pwedeng sabihin na barium sulfate to barium sulfate. Okay, parehas lang yan. Naintindihan? Naintindihan yan, guys. So, um, burahin ka tong explanation natin na again, please master that tayo mga oxidation number. So, yung barium sulfate is product over reactant. reactant. So, the KSP is always given. Remember, ha? is equivalent to barium tsaka sulfate over product which is barium sulfate. But if you're going to check, guys, ano, ang KSP value lang natin is just a reactant. Guys, um, ang solubility kasi natin, similar sa water, hindi na natin nilalagay yung reactant. Always the product lang ang ating nilalagay sa equilibrium constant. Kasi where after yung solubility product. Okay? Kasi ito yung solubility product. So, no need to write our reactant. So, ito ang formula ng ating KSP. Okay? Now, we have dissociation of weak acid and weak base. So, in the case of a uh, weak acid, ang tawag natin sa kanya is Ka, which is also given kapag weak base, ang tawag natin is Kb. Okay? And we also have your formula of complex ion. So, ito guys ay sa complex ions na natin siguro i-discuss, dadaanan. Tsaka itong oxidation and distribution equilibrium because this is too complicated to explain as is. It would take one chapter to discuss just your formation constant of BN or your complex ion. So, we'll first focus on the first four, which is KW, KSP, KA, and KB. And as I was saying, hindi to kinakaya ng isang discussion lamang in two hours kasi masyado siyang mahabang topic. Okay? So, this I have already discussed, ano? Um, the ion product constant of water or, or KW. So, Paano na for, na form si hydronium dito guys, no? Kapag um binalance mo kasi ang equation natin, no? Kung mapapansin niyo, ito by balance equation na. Yes, kasi meron tayong four. Tingnan din, kapag uh, isa lang H2O tapos magpo-form ng H plus OH. It's also a balance equation. But then to make it more formal, if we are going to add another um hydrogen, saka na form si hydronium ion plus OH. Kaya, uh, nag-interchangeably, nag tinatawag natin si hydro hydrogen at saka si hydronium as your proton. Okay? So, um, if we're going to write it, no, H3O times OH over H2O. Bakit may square dito? Kasi guys, dalawang hydrogen ang ginamit natin sa taas. So, yung kanyang constant, yung kanyang um, number of mole, siya yung magiging exponent. Huwag niyong kakalimutan yan. Madalas yung makalimutan. Okay? So, if we're going to transpose at create another um, formula for this one, we can um, deduct that K. Ano nangyari dyan? Ito ay kinos multiply natin. Ano? Guys, I hope by now marunong lang kayong magmanipulate ng ganito. Ano? At alam nyo talaga yung nangyayari kapag tinuturo ko ng arrow or kapag sinasabi kong cross multiply. Kasi this one ay medyo mahaba siya kung iisa-isahin ninyo. Ano bang nangyari dito? They are multiplying both side. We are multiplying both side by H2O. Um, let me give you a, a simple... Um, Simple problem. Say, for example, force is equal to mass times acceleration. Ay, hindi pala. Ika lang ha, force mass. Mass is equal to force over acceleration. Say, for example, this one. This is a simple formula na pwede natin pag-practisan, ano? Sa Newton's second law. So, to omit yung ating denominator para sa mga hindi pa masyadong familiar on manipulating this type of equation, no, we have to multiply. Para ma-eliminate natin yung nasa ilalim, para malipat natin sa kabilang side of equation, we have to multiply them by acceleration. So, ano mangyayari dyan? Magiging A times M, magiging syempre AM, tama? Or AM. Okay? And then, ano mangyayari sa kabila? Magiging, tandaan ninyo, kapag walang, walang laman yung denominator, it is always equivalent to 1. Naintindihan? So, sa kabila, ano yung mangyayari dyan? F times A over A. So, in this case, ano yung makakancel natin? We'll cancel A and we'll cancel A. And then, ang mangyayari dyan ay magiging A times M 
is equal to F. Ito na yung general formula natin for for F or yung for force. So, from formula of your mass, pwede tayo mag-derive ng force. Ganito ang magiging formula niya. So, you don't need to write your one. Naintindihan kung paano mag-manipulate ng formula. Okay. So, ito yung pinakamahirap na, ito yung pinakamahaba. Ito yung long method. But of course, may shortcut tayo dyan. Ano yung shortcut ni ma'am? Okay. Imumultiply ko lang itong, itataas ko lang to guys. For example, ha. F is equal to M over A. Ang ginagawa ko dyan, ginakross multiply ko lang. Ganito. ganito. Imagine nyo ganito siya. F over 1 is equivalent to mass over A. If we're going to cross multiply that, ano mangyari? F times A is equal to M. Ito yung kanya magiging formula. Or think of it this way. Imumove nyo lang to pataas sa numerator. Pero baka kasi mahirapan kayong tandaan. So, mas okay kung cross multiplication para hindi kayo mahirapang mag-manipulate ng formula and equation. So, ganun din yung nangyari dito. If we're going to manipulate this, ano mangyayari dyan? KW times H2O squared is equivalent to ano, H3O and OH. Okay, so ito yung pwede mong ma-derive na formula. And this one is equivalent to your KW. Kaya ang shortcut KW formula is equivalent to just H3O and OH. Kaysa I hope na intindihan pa, halit mino kapag hindi nasusundan. Ang formula na natin na-derive for KW or water constant is hydronium times hydroxide. No need to write, no need to write yung water at the bottom. Okay, so we have a sample formula on this one, sample computation. You can compute with me kung nagko-compute pa rin kita dyan pa rin kahit hindi pa kayo inaan to. Kano aga-aga, pinagpo-problema ko kayo. Calculate the hydronium and hydroxide ion concentration of pure water at 25 degrees Celsius and 100. So, we have to look, of course, again, ang formula natin is KW is equivalent to H3O times OH. Minus. So, at 25 degrees Celsius, I think we have already compute for that one. Ang given KW, kapag binalikan ninyo yung table dun sa book, is 1.01 times 10 raised to 14. So, balikan ko lang ulit yung formula just to refresh you. 1.01 times 10 raised to negative 14 is equivalent to x squared. And then, to remove your x squared, no? We have to add square root. So, ano mangyari dyan? Magiging 1.01 times 10 raised to negative 7. So, that will be x. That will be your x. Okay? So, ito ang value ng 1 H3O at 1 hydroxide mo. Okay? Naintindihan? Tingnan nyo yan. Um, actually, accurate yan. Kasi kung titingnan ninyo, a 1.01 for you to check. KW, ay sorry, sorry, sorry. Ano yun? H2O, H3O plus OH. Ano? If you're going to look, no, 1.01 times 10 raised to negative 14 is also equivalent to 1.01 times 10 raised to negative 7 plus 1.01 times 10 raised to negative 7. So, equal pa rin siya kasi parehas 14 on both on both sides. Naintindihan? How about in 100 degrees Celsius? So, in 100 degrees Celsius, it's 49 times 10 raised to negative 14. So, how about that? Now, 49 KW is equivalent to H3O OH. So, um, KW natin is, again, 49 times 10 raised to negative 14. Ito yung magiging x. This one will also be x kasi equal lang sila ng dissociation. will form x squared. Again, to omit the square root, we have to, of course, add square root on the other side of the equation para ma-eliminate ito at ma-cancel natin. Okay? So, what is the square root of your 49 times 10 raised to negative 14? Ay, sorry. Ano yun? Square root of 49 times 10 raised to negative 14 okay so uh, sorry guys hindi na ko scientific ano palitan ko po ba ay, ay wala ito wala ayan 
Punta nyo na lang by default yung calculator, guys. Napapalitan naman siya dito. Anyway. Okay, mamaya ko na lang papalitan. So, ang answer dito is 7 times 10 raised to negative 7. Yun yung isang value ng ating x. So, for H3O, ang value niya at 100 degrees Celsius is 7 times 10 raised to negative 7. And for OH, ang value niya at 100 degrees Celsius at, uh, or boiling point is 7 times 10 raised to negative 7. You understand? Okay, so mad medyo madali lang ito, ano, itong hydrogen. So about this one, calculate the hydronium and hydroxide concentration in 0 0.200 molarity aqueous NaOH. I think the computation for this one can also be found in the book. Ayan. So, sodium hydroxide is a strong electrolyte and the contribution to the hydroxide ion is, guys, kapag strong electrolyte, ano ibig sabihin ng 100% siyang nagdi-dissociate. Ang contribution daw niya as a concentration ng hydroxide given siya is 0 0.200. 0 0.200. Okay? So, bakit may plus H3O dyan? Kasi guys, if you are going to remember, no, ikokompile mo, bakit ma'am kailangang Imixa ng water. Guys, kasi NaOH, ang sabi dyan is aqueous. Meaning, NaOH has been dissolved with water. Um, tama ba ako? 2,6. Parang mali, ano? H2O kasi. Sorry. Ito pala. Okay. So, dito sa equation pa lang na ito, guys. Meron tayong pinagkukuhaan ng OH at saka H. Ito. Na plus Tama ba ito? Teka lang ha. Na plus OH plus H tapos dalawa 2H Wait lang guys ha. Wait lang. Mali, no? Kasi ang dinidissociate ni Na should be your H O H H N O Sorry guys, ha? wait lang. We're not going to add. Okay, so this NaOH will be subject into an autoprotolysis since it's aqueous solution. Na. So let's um, let's use this part of an equation. I'm going to confuse. Okay, hindi na ilagay yung water. So magiging Na plus OH. Dahil siya aqueous, meron din tayo for water which is H. Plus OH. Ayan. Okay, so, ang given daw dyan is, calculate the hydronium and hydroxide concentration of in 0 0.200 molarity aqueous NaOH. So, ang given natin dyan ay 0 0.200 molarity aqueous NaOH. 
Ang pinapahanap is si hydronium at saka si hydroxide. So, let's go back ano, dun sa ating um, explanation. So, sodium hydroxide is a strong electrolyte and its contribution to hydroxide ion in the solution, ang sabi daw is 200 molarity. Diba? Ang sabi ko, molarity can also be mole per liter. So, as an example ng 9-1, hydroxide ion and hydroniums are formed in equal amount from dissociation of water. Therefore, we write hydroxide is equivalent to 200 plus H2O. But ganito yung nangyari, guys. Isulat natin yan. I-understand natin bakit ganyan yung kanyang na deduct na information. Ang sabi dyan is hydroxide is equivalent to 0 0.200 molarity plus H3O. Okay, bakit ganito guys? Anong, anong pinagmula nito? Tingnan ninyo ha, ang ating sodium hydroxide, this one sabi din sa kanya kanina is a strong base. So, sa strong base, nagdi-dissociate sila fully. So, equivalent lang ang amount ng sodium at ng hydroxide dito. Tama? Naintindihan? So, given that, ang ating hydroxide is 0 0.200 molarity. Ang dissociation niya is not X kasi given na ang total niya na molarity. Ang molarity is different to the amount of mass. Different siya sa percentage. Different siya sa volume. Kasi different ang molarity. Ang molarity is mole per liter. It's like um, siya yung um, component. No? Molarity. Siya yung component mismo nung, comp nung, nung compound na ito. So kung, kung 0.200 molarity ang NaOH, your sodium will also be 0 0.200 molarity, will dissociate completely as your reactant. Ganon din si, zero, si OH, si hydroxide. 0 0.200 molarity din ito. Naiintindihan ninyo? So, meron na kayong value agad dito ng hydroxide coming from your NaOH. And ito yun. This one is the OH from your Na. OH. Now, bakit H3O ito? Guys, ang pinag-uusapan dito is the total OH found in the solution. And remember that aqueous compound ang NaOH. Okay, aqueous yan. So, meron yung mixture ng water. Now, bakit H3O yung nakalagay dito instead of OH, ma'am? Okay? So, guys, di ba ang water is KW is equivalent to OH times H2O kasi nagdi-dissociate din siya completely. Okay? So, um, instead of OH ang nilagay niya, H3O yung nilagay niya. Bakit H3O? Kasi parehas lang naman dapat na magiging value ang OH at H3O mo kasi they are dissociating completely. Naiintindihan? So, kasi yung NaOH natin, may fair amount of OH na isi-share o iaambag situation. Si water mo, since siya ay aqueous NaOH, may fair amount din siya na OH na pwedeng maiambag sa situation. So, ang tanong, what is the hydronium? What is the hydronium found, uh, total hydronium, and yung hydroxide na nasa concentration of aqueous NaOH? Naiintindihan? So, the OH from there will came from your water as well as your NaOH. Naiintindihan yun, guys. So, balikan natin yung practice problem. Okay. So, where H3O is equal to hydroxide ion, ito yung sinasabi, equivalent kasi sa OH ang H3O. From the dissociation of water, kasi parehas lang sila ng amount because water dissociate completely. Okay? The concentration of your OH from the water is insignificant. However, compared to 0 0.200, so we can write Okay. Guys, bakit insignificant your, yung uh, sa water? Yung OH sa water? Guys, kasi imagine ninyo ha. Yung water natin, uh, nasolve natin to kanina, tama? So, 1.00 times 10 raised to negative 14. This one is 1.00 times 10 raised to negative 14. Imagine kung, ay sorry, 7 pala, ano? Baka makonfuse kayo, 7. Imagine nyo yun. Ito yun, no? yung nasa calculator ko. 0 0.0007. May bearing ba yan sa weight? Sobrang liit lang ng bearing yan sa weight. So, kaya ang sabi dito, anong sabi dito? Ano yun? Hala na wala. <laughs> okay, so ang sabi dito, the concentration of OH from the water is insignificant compared to the OH that can be found. Ito guys, ha, sa NaOH, tingnan nyo. Yung 0 0.200 molarity na makikita mo sa NaOH, itong OH na to, 
contribution niya. Plus yung 0.000007 molarity. No? Molarity from your H2O. Pag in mo yan, guys, tingin niya magmamatter pa itong 0.007. So, to save yourself sa katakot-takot na problem solving, hindi na natin nilalagay yung 0.007 na ambag ng ating sodium hydroxide. Naiintindihan? Naiintindihan. So, ganun siyang kaliit. So, if uh, uh, if we are going to calculate for the hydronium ion concentration, that will be Kailan ha? Ito kasi in case kung medyo magulo itong formula eh. Pero wait lang guys, sabi ko kayo mas madali. Okay, okay. Ito yan guys. Naka kasi makonfuse kayo. Okay. So yung KW natin, again, dahil siya aqueous solution, may participation ng water, we'll use KW. That will be H3O times OH. Tama. So, alam natin yung value ng OH natin. Tama? Kasi siya ay sodium hydroxide aqueous na nag-fully dissociate. That will be 0.200 molarity. Tama? Alam ba natin yung H3O? Saan lang ba manggagaling yung H3O? Guys, kay water lang yan manggagaling. Wala namang, wala namang hydrogen sa, uh, hydronium sa NaOH. Saan yan manggagaling? Sa aqueous part ng NaOH. So, hindi natin alam ang H3O. How about your KW? KW of water, which is 1 point at room temperature times 10 raised to negative 14. So if we are going to compute X, and we are going to manipulate this formula, saan ito mapupunta? If we are going to cross-multiply, pababa ito no, sa times 1. Tama ba? Magiging... Um, ay... Hindi din ito aalisin dito kasi siya hinahanap. So, magiging formula na if you are going to manipulate ay 1.01 times 10 raised to negative 14, 14 divided by 0 0.200 molarity. Okay, let me check kung tama yung ating ginawa. Ayan, okay? So, so ang answer natin dito will be 1.01 times 10 raised to negative 14 over, sorry, negative 14 over 0 0.200. So, the answer is, okay, ang pangit ng ano ko, ha? teka lang, ay simulator na lang ha. So, ano to, 5.05 .05 times 10 raised to negative 14 or 5.05 .05 times raised to negative 16. Parang lang yan, minove ko lang. Okay, para meron siyang, two sig meron siyang uh, three significant figures. So, 5.05 .05 times 10 raised to negative 14. Ito ang value nino, ni hydronium na na-dissociate. Naiintindihan, ito yung X natin. Maliwanag yun, guys. Now, if you're going to ask, what is the pH of a zero? Follow-up question, halimbawa. What is the pH of the 0 0.200 aqueous solution of your NaOH? So, our formula for pH is ano? pH is equal to negative logarithm of H3O or H. Tama? So, if we're going to compute for that, ito yun. Copy natin siya. Okay, negative logarithm of Ayan, yung kanina natin. So, that will be, ang pH niya is 13.30. Nagme-make sense ba to guys? NaOH is a base. Tama? And nagme-make sense na ang pH niya is 13.30 kasi 13.30 sa pH scale natin is above 7 which means siya talaga ay base. Naiintindihan, kahit may aqueous solution pa yan, siya talaga ay base. Guys, do you understand? So, ganun tayong mag-compute ng KW type of problem. Okay? Next tayo. 
Ayan. Next natin, we have your solubility product constant. So, hindi sabi ko, guys, unlike kay water, medyo komplikado ang pag-solve ng solubility product constant. And merong isang separate topic for this one, dapat, as well as sa KA and KB. Pero pahapyawan natin ng konti. Tingnan natin kung kaya nang isolve. Okay? Kasi may time pa naman tayo. Kung hindi tayo kakabot sa KA and KB, I'll just send you a recording Eh, pero hindi ko siya isasama sa quiz ninyo, yung KA and KB, pero kasama siya sa exam. Okay? Okay, so, solubility product constant natin. Okay, so, ang formula natin for this one, gaya ng sinabi ko, ano, sa KSP, say, for example, si barium iodate. In this case, this is barium iodate. Okay? Okay. So, si barium iodate, kapag nag-dissociate, will just be barium plus iodate, negative 1. Okay. So, instead of writing product over reactant, as your formula for KSP, ano nga yung palatandaan natin dito? We are not writing, we're, go we're not going to write barium iodate. We're just going to write KSP is equivalent to barium plus iodate. Or, sorry, hindi ko na bracket. Barium. Okay lang ba kayo? <laughs> Mahirap ba, guys? Medyo komplikado talaga ito, guys. Pasensya na kayo. Pero, kailangan talaga natin siya i-discuss. Okay? So, uh, ito yung formula ng ating K. KSP, barium times iodate. If you're going to read your scope, mas komplikado yung binibigay niyang mga computation. But I hope ma-follow niyo pa rin yung kay school kahit gano'n pa siya kahirap. Lalo na dito sa barium iodate natin. So, stick with me habang dinidiscuss natin tong barium iodate. What mass of barium iodate ayan, yung molecular weight na binigay can be dissolved in 500 ml of water at 25 degrees Celsius. So guys, sobrang komplikado itong problem na to. Ito yung unang problem kay Skog. At unang bagsak pa lang ng problem niya. Sobrang paikot-ikot na. Guys, tingnan nyo ha, ano yung given? Ano yung hinahanap? Mass. So we expect that this would be in gram yung hinahanap. Yung masosolve natin. Okay, mass of ano? Barium iodate. Okay, and um, given the molecular weight ni barium iodate, which is 487 gram per mole, can be dissolved at, ano, can be dissolved at 500, I'm sorry, volume, given yung volume, which is 500.0 ml of H2O at 25 degrees Celsius. At 25 degrees Celsius, ang K KW or natin ng water, I don't know kung magkagamit ito, pero let's see, is 1.01 times. I just list ko ano yung pwede kong mailista. Ganun kayo mag-solve, guys, ha? Ilista nyo kung ano yung mga dididak nyo from the problem itself. Okay, and our KSP given is 1.57 times 10 raised to negative 9. The problem is, si barium 2 iodate, no, being a solubility product constant, they does not dissociate fully. Kaya, we're not using the reactant. We are just using the product kasi we are after the product, the precipitate. Naintindihan kung bakit ganun yung nangyari. Unlike kay, unlike kay acid and base, we're going to use the reactant at the denominator. But this one and your water does not use the reactant as its denominator. So, um, from the given, meron tayong grams, wala, okay. Molecular weight, meron. Volume, meron. So, from this one, kaya natin mag-deduct ng ano dyan? Molarity. Molarity nino? Ni barium sulfate. The problem is, wala tayong value for your mass kasi yun yung hinahanap niya. Okay? So, wala tayong value for barium sulfate. So, hindi natin alam kung ilang percent din magdi-dissociate si barium sulfate into barium plus iodate. Sorry ba? Nakakonfuse na ako kay sulfate and iodate. Okay? Yung sabi ko kanilang sulfate, that's iodate. Okay? So, let's let's turn it turn to scoop. No, tingnan natin yung formula na ginamit niya. So, ito yung kanyang equation. Barium iodate will dissolve into barium and to iodate. Okay? So, the KSP is barium times iodate. Okay. Man, bakit ganyan? Sige, let's explain that. No? 
barium plus iodate, IO3. This one kasi ay negative 1, negative 1 alone. And this one is positive 2, tama? So if we're going to dissociate this, meron tayong barium at saka si iodate. Okay, so ilang barium yung meron? Isa, tapos si iodate ay dalawa. Kasi, ba't nangyari yun guys? Barium, iodate, negative 1. Si barium ay positive 2. Yung 2 ay mapupunta sa subscript. And then yung 1 mapupunta dito. So, ang, ang finish or formula, standard formula niya is barium, iodate, 2. Yan yung itsura niya. Okay? So, kaya siya naging ganito. Okay, naintindihan yun. Again, guys, i-master nyo yung oxidation state para ngayon di kayo nakakonfuse magsulat ng formula. So, we have to add 2 here. Bakit? Kasi nga, dalawa to. So, we have to balance first the equation. After balancing the equation, you have to write KSP is equivalent to ano? Barium times iodate. But dahil si iodate natin ay dalawang kanyang constant, we have to add it as an exponent. Okay, so ito yon. Now, dito na tayo. So, barium iodate. And the KSP value daw is, given ba? KSP value is 1.57 times 10 raised to negative 9. We we'll just have to rewrite barium. And we have to rewrite iodate. Okay, next natin. Anong sabi ni Skoog? The equation describing the equilibrium reveals that one mole of barium is formed for each mole of barium iodate that dissolves. Therefore, a mole solubility of barium iodate is equivalent to barium. Again, ulitin natin. The equation describing the equilibrium reveals that one mole of barium is formed for each mole of barium iodate that dissolves. Therefore, equivalent daw si barium iodate kay barium. Okay, let me let me discuss this, guys, no? Find the ratio from the equation. So, ang sabi dito, ang sabi dito, ha? For every one barium iodate, ito yung ratio natin, for every one mole nito, merong ilang mole ng barium? One. At merong ilang mole ng, ilang mole ng iodate? Ilang mole ng iodate? We have two. Ito yun. We have two moles of iodate. So, if, if, barium iodate 3, ay barium iodate is 1 is to 1 to barium, ibig sabihin, barium iodate amounts to the same uh, dissociation as barium. Naiintindihan? And si iodate, si iodate ay um, two times ni barium. So, si iodate ay um, 2 times ni barium. Okay? So, ito yung ating um, equation. So, isipin nyo to as an algebraic expression. Okay? Whereas si barium yung magiging x natin. Okay? So, magiging 2x ito. Naiintindihan ba yun? Naiintindihan ba yun? Pa paano unti-unting sinosolve yung problem? Okay. So, uh, since 2 moles of iodate are produced for each of barium, the concentration is twice the barium concentration. So, 2 barium. Okay? At din guys, oh, medyo complicated ba siya kapag barium sa inyo or kapag X ang mas madali? Okay? So, let's let's create or let's solve. Ano? Kasi sa kanya ginamit niya instead of using X, ako kasi guys ay mas nasisimplihan kung X na lang yung gagawin dun sa value ng barium. No? If barium is equivalent to X. So, KSP natin. KSP is equivalent to barium times iodate. Tama? And kung, kung, given ang KSP, which is 1.57 times 10 raised to negative 9, ang barium natin ay let it become X. And yung iodate natin, ang sabi dyan is 2 times ni barium. So, ano yun? 2X. Don't forget your exponent. Okay? So, magiging nangyari dito is, tama ba? Or, ika lang ha? Okay, tama naman tayo, okay? Sorry guys, uh, medyo... Oh, 
Okay, so if we're going to, uh, ito muna, yung nasa loob muna, yung ma-exponent muna, that will be 4x squared. So this one is times x pa din, kasi wala naman siya exponent. So this will become 4x cubed. So 1.57 times 10 raised to negative 9. So para maalis yung cube natin dito, we have to divide it by we have to cube root it, ano? And then, para maalis yung 4 dito, we have to divide the equation by 4. So, cancel na ito. Matitira na lang sa kabilang side na equation is your x. Let me rewrite this again. 1.57 times 10 raised to negative 9 over 4. So, if we are going to compute for this, ano, cube root. As may cube root natin. Cube root. Okay, um, eh. tapos sa taas would be your cube root, shift, shift, ayan, so 1.57 times 10 raised to negative 9 divided by 4. Tama ba ako? Dapat nasa loob yung 4, ano? Tama ba ako ng compute? Okay, so dapat nasa loob niya, cube root yung 4. Hindi ko napasok sa loob. Wait lang nga guys. Dapat ganito pala. Cube root of, yan, 1.57 times 10 raised to negative 9 divided by 4. Ayan, so we'll get x is equivalent to 7.32 times 10 raised to negative 4. Tama ba? Press ba tayo ng sagot? Ayan. And then the, the unit for that should be molarity. Sino ba yung x, guys? Sino ba yung x? Remember, si x ay si barium. So the value of your barium is 7.32 times 10 raised to negative 4. And the value of your iodate, ang sabi dyan, is 2 times ng inyong bar barium. So 7.32 times 10 raised to negative 4. Guys, for a while, ha? Okay, so the value of your um, iodate is 2 times the value of your barium. So if you're going to uh, multiply this by 2, the answer would be 0. I'm sorry, gawin natin um, scientific notation, ano? 1.46 times 10 raised to negative 3. Negative 3. Ito yung value ng ating iodate. And this one is the value of your Barium. So, this is your molarity. Anong tanong dyan? What is the mass of your barium iodate? And since barium is equivalent to barium iodate, meron na tayong value ng molarity. Guys, ano bang kulang kanina? Ano yung tinatanong natin? Yung mass. And hindi natin masolve yan kasi wala tayong value ng molarity. Tama? Anong formula ng molarity? Molarity is equal to gram over molecular weight over liter. So, if you're going to manipulate this to the value of your grams, ang mangyari dyan is molarity times molecular weight times liter. So, dahil may value na tayo ng molarity, gram is equal to 1, sorry, 7, ito pala, 7, this one, 7 point, okay, 7 point 32 times 10 raised to negative 4 times molecular weight natin, ano molecular weight? 4, 8, 7, times yung ating liter, which should be in liter, ano? Kasi molarity is in liter. Kung napanood nyo yung video ko na isa, this one is 0 0.5 liter. So, if we are to, uh, if we are to compute the, them, ay, if we are going to compute them, no, ay 7.32 times 10 raised to negative 4 times 487 times 0 0.5. So, this is your gram. 0 0.782 grams of barium 
Ay, uh, date. Ganun kahaba yung problem. Tingnan nyo, ang liit-late lang ang binigay niya na question. Pero yung katakot-takot na solving at formula yung binigay natin. So, I'm going to give you also the copy of this transcribe. If you need this, I'm going to make this a PDF. So, ayan. Iba po tayong practice problem so you can practice on that. But we are not going to discuss since uh, meron tayong time constriction. Time restriction, constriction, ano? Um, hindi itinay mo na mag-discuss ng KA and KB. Let's just leave that on the video that I'm going to send it to you. But hindi ko yan ibibigay, ilalagay muna sa quiz. Okay, wala muna tayong ganyan sa quiz. Pero kasama yan sa exam. Okay? So, medyo madali lang naman ang KA compare kay Barium IUD, kay KSP. Ayan. So, ito siguro i-discuss ko din sa video that I'm going to send to you. Itong na naiwan natin ng mga computation. Kasi kung komplikado itong na-discuss natin, mas komplikado yung yun. So, hindi tayo matatapos nun. Hang, baka mamaya hanggang alauna tayo mag-solve ng mga yan. So, that's it for our KWKSP and our electrolyte aqueous solution. Okay? So, again guys, I'm going to give you a copy of this transcript kaya hindi ko binura itong nandito. And I hope kahit magulo yung sulat ko, maintindihan nyo pa din since my video naman to follow. Um, I will send the video later, video link. So, ayun lang. Do you have, still have any questions? Saktong 9 o'clock na. May question pa ba? Kindly comment. Any question? Okay. Yes, Mayor? Ma, may question po ako, pero hindi po siya about sa topic po today. Mm -mm. Ma'am, ask ko lang po, kasi kung...